An endangered species has faced all the odds over the years, through predation and poaching, yet still roam the earth quite gracefully. This is the cutest animal you've probably never even heard of. Here's a historic story of a beautiful species and a diet that outlived the ancient Romans. The story of the pangolin. The Manus Taminki, or better known as the ground pangolin, is a heavily endangered species throughout eastern and southern Africa, poached mainly for their keratin scales and for the taste buds of the wealthy. Known for their nervous postures, pangolins are a fairly basic species, feeding on small insects and termites exclusively, yet very picky in terms of which species and termites they choose to eat. Pangolins are basically the bats of the Manidae family. In other words, they're nocturnal, they don't have that good of eyesight, and rely on their hearing and smelling sense to, de to detect prey. Instead of hanging upside down in caves, pangolins prefer hollow tree dance on sandy grounds, where they can dig their own home however big they choose. The more protection these guys have, the better. The mothers spend a lot of time with their offspring, or at least until they don't look like little pine cones anymore, and need the protection. The artichoke mammal lacks any form of teeth, and rely on their stomach acids for breaking down the insects. In terms of finding their meals, the front legs of the pangolin are very strong, being able to upturn an entire mound of termites and feast. The tongues of the pangolin are probably their most prominent feature, being able to stretch their entire body length, folding up in a stomach cavity. In terms of classifications, on screen you'll be able to see everything you'll ever need to know about the classifications of the pangolin. Well, how did the pangolins become the cutest little animals on Earth? Because it definitely didn't start that way. First, we travel back 163 million years ago, back to the time of the dinosaurs, where we see possibly one of the oldest forms of the modern day mammal. The Stegosaurus is a fairly well-known dinosaur, due primarily to Jurassic Park, and at first might not seem like an ancestor to the pangolin, but the two share quite a few anatomical similarities. Both have a conical-shaped head pointing to the ground, as well as the highest point of their body being at the hip bones. Like the pangolin, the Stegosaurus had a tail covered in flat and protective plates, as well as an almost identical ratio of bone sizes. The mass extinction of the dinosaurs could have also contributed to this, as only the ones who are small enough to dig would be the only stegosauruses to stay alive. The small jaw of the modern-day pangolin could be a vestigial structure, attributed to when the diet of the species was different, possibly a species with a plant-based diet. From this evidence, it is possible, although unlikely, that the modern-day pangolin could have descended from the ancient stegosaurus. Next up is another three million years later, where we see the first mammal walk the earth, never before seen giving birth directly to their offspring, and using its mammary glands to feed the babies. Since pangolins are mammals, it's a pretty fair assumption that they're related to the earliest ancestor of the shrew, being descendants from the first mammal on Earth. The two have similar bone structures, and here's another example of where a jaw could have been used and then later discarded. The diet of the two species are fairly similar, where shrews would pick off bugs and insects along the beds of the river, instead of using a long tongue. The shrew could have adopted a scales mutation, which would offer more protection from predators, thus allowing these offspring to survive and mate. I'm honestly glad that the pangolin took this route of evolution, and not some other options. Now we don't see another source of fossil or hints about pangolin ancestry for another 113 million years, which is basically the same amount of time that it takes for Disney to release another Star Wars movie. This time it's a Eurotem... no. Eurotem... no. Eurotem and Dua. That's right. Okay, so now there's an increase in size, fairly similar to the modern day pangolin. The main difference is that there is no keratin found along with the fossils of the ancestor, meaning it was covered completely in hair. The claws and thicker frontal limbs show undisputed evidence of ancestry, most likely used for the digging and climbing done today. The diet of this ancestor is most likely a little more refined to the insect category, as the jaw is slowly decreasing in size later to becoming more of a snout. From this animal, we can tell that the pangolin ancestry is slowly becoming a little more refined to the species we know today.
This next one isn't actually too far off from the Euro time in Dua, but it did choose a much easier name to pronounce. Here is the Patreon Menace. Following the big Euro, there is also only one fossil remnant that paleontologists were able to unearth. Since the last ancestor, the Patreon Menace has grown scales, although most likely not as much scales that are in this picture. In two million years, we are our next and last ancestor with a full body of scales, so the generations are slowly mutating and evolving to cover up more and more of the body with them. Because the species is set around Africa, the animal is getting its stronger frontal claws and most likely a more light brownish body color, adapting to its environment. This adaptation is what's going to give the pangolin its color that it has today. Last but not least, we have the Eomanus. Jumping only about 2 million more years into the future, we see a pangolin, except it's not exactly the same. The animal now brings about the Folly Dota order, creating an armored mammal ready to defend itself in the sight of predators. The Patriomanus watched Game of Thrones and immediately wanted to be a dragon, to which evolution snapped its fingers and brought about the Eomanus, ready to wreak havoc on villages across the globe. Wait, it's still the same size? No wings, huh? How about the fire? No? Well, at least over time it adapted to secrete a ghastly odor from its butt, kind of like a skunk. Anyways, the dawn pangolin is now almost identical to the pangolin of today, except that scales don't cover its head and feet, so predators only really needed a leg sweep to finish the job. As it's geologically constrained to Africa, it hasn't really adapted to anything other than the warm, sandy conditions, meaning it's no good with the colder north. The only evolution that the pangolin still faced before them was covering up completely in scales, which is what the modern day pangolin is. As far as speciation goes, it is now completely broken off the chain with the Eurotemindua ancestry and created a new species altogether. Each of these ancestors has imposed something new upon a growing organism, whether it be adaptation or natural selection, and has shown quite a deal when it comes to fossil records, isolating mechanisms, and extinction level events. From studying this specimen, we can tell that speciation is the branching off of one species to form a new one that cannot breed with its neighbors. This historically rich Folidota shows that each and every animal has a past that has formed what they are today. Us humans have so much more to learn about the process of evolution, how it affects species as a whole, and how to do good things with it for generations to come.